being buried in the hole, which is why I resonate very well with what Alex does, is to really make people understand that veganism is, is not boring. <laughs> Hey tribe, Stephanie Dixon here for Green is a New Black TV, your guide to conscious living in Asia. Today we're shooting in Singapore with the wonderful Anne, the marketing manager of Veganberg. Anne, thank you so much for having us. Thank you, thanks for having me here. So tell me a little bit about your journey and how you really got started and drawn towards working with Veganberg. I became vegan in 2014, before that I was vegetarian for about four years. Um, and I started on this journey because Initially, it was for health reasons with my family, and everything else fell under that umbrella. So the reason why I joined Veganberg was because I was really excited about what Veganberg was doing, which was really targeting the millennials. And I think um, that the millennials, at the end of the day, are the key drivers of a sustainable movement. Um, so that's been really exciting. In Singapore, San Francisco, we're really hitting that target audience well. Social media, we're reaching out to them. and. The sort of reciprocation that we've been getting from them has been amazing. Yeah, I think that's a really beautiful thing. And I guess for maybe some people who are watching that don't know what veganism is or don't, doesn't really understand you know, what that entails, maybe you can kind of break that down first. Yeah, of course. So veganism um, basically is, is, is like vegetarianism, but without milk no cheese, no dairy, no form of animal products. So it's just really just a lifestyle of trying to make um, as less harm as possible to all beings, to the environment, to the animals. And um, what we do at Veganberg, don't tell people to make, you know, um, less harm to all animals. We just try to make it fun. Because at the end of the day, veganism can be fun, and that's what we try to do. Um, so um, that's what veganism is, and that's how Veganberg takes it. So you guys started in 2010, which we're in 2017 now, that was seven years ago, which is really a very pioneering move for the, both the plant-based and the vegan movement. So what was it that really kick-started Alex to take such a bold step back in 2010? As soon as Alex and Tracy, his wife, had their kids, Kyra and Aglaia, um, they realized they wanted fast food to be healthy for their kids. And not just for the kids, but for all kids and for the future generations. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how Veganberg started, um, and never turned back since. We opened in San Francisco in 2015, um, right at Hate Ashbury. That's where the hippie movement started in the 60s, and it was just very fitting. And um, both locations, Singapore and San Francisco, have been really doing very well since. Yeah, I think that's really exciting. So I guess I'd be really interested to know what the customer growth and the customer you know, experience has been like over the last seven years mm -hmm. and how you've seen that change and how the company has kind of grown and yeah, if there's any insights around what that movement, I guess, has looked like. Right. Back in 2010, um, when I spoke with Alex, he mentioned that um, people weren't reciprocating to it as well as they are now. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of vegans and vegetarians eating at our restaurant back in 2010, but now a lot of, um, I'd say that the, the customer base is probably 60-70% meat eaters and 30% vegans and vegetarians. So really we're starting to see a shift in people um, just making more conscious decisions whether they're vegans or vegetarians. They just want to have a healthier diet. They want to, you know, contribute to the environment, especially in recent circumstances with the climate. You know, I think it's, it's just people are starting to make a move and starting to take action. Yeah, which I think is a really exciting thing. It's a very exciting time to be part of this bigger movement and to be in these industries, I think, oh, at this, at this mm -hmm. current stage. What do you think is kind of stopping more people to take these kind of choices or to realize that actually we can vote with our wallets and we can make better choices with our food consumption? So what do you think we need to do to get more people to kind of realize that actually food is a really big part of being mm -hmm. sustainable and being conscious? Mm -hmm. I think the first step to that is to inspire people through really fun and engaging ways and mm -hmm. food is a really big part of that because everybody loves food. So Especially in Singapore especially and in especially Asia. Especially in Singapore, <laughs> exactly. So you want to give them stuff that are really tasty and suited to their um, taste buds as well. So recently we launched the chili crab burger which was a huge hit. Um, we did that for National Day and so many people came to Vegan Burger to try the chili crab burger because 
um, not because they were vegans or vegetarians, but because they just love what we were doing with it. And, and I think a lot of people, the sort of feedback that we were getting was, you know, um, I can't believe this is plant-based. You know, if this was plant-based, I can do this every day. That's the thing, and I think that's the really exciting part with the plant-based movement right now is that when you find places or, or people like Veganburg, mm. and the food is so delicious, mm. and it really, if, if all vegan food was like that, I think it would make it so much easier for people to make that choice. Totally. So what are some of the myths or misconceptions that you would love to bust around veganism or plant-based diets? I think for me personally, and also for being buried in the whole, which is why I resonate very well with what Alex does, is to really make people understand that veganism is, is not boring. So, yeah, I think firstly, inspire people through really fun and engaging ways, and then in the process, educate them, and then keep them, you know, on their toes with more exciting food. That's what we do at Veganburg. Yeah, and I love that. That's great. So, what would Mother Nature say if she could speak right now? Well, I think should be proud. She'd be proud with the sort of movements that's happening, um, not just with, obviously, not just in the veganism realm, but um, we've got, got really awesome groups, and you guys are doing really awesome stuff with bringing awareness to Singapore and abroad as well, and um, we've got PM Hayes that's trying to you know, tackle um, um, sustainable palm oil issues, mm -hmm. which we just partnered up with as well, so that's been really exciting. Oh, so all our foods, um, you know, completely sustainable palm oil, so we're, all of us are doing really tiny steps to make a big change. Yeah, and that, that is the difference, and that leaves us perfectly into our final segment, which is at Green is New Black, we love taking little green steps. Mm -hmm. So what are some little green steps that you would um, ask our audience to take so that they can make better choices with their consumption? Sure. Um, I think just just try considering a, um, a vegan diet at least maybe once a week or twice a week. Um, or even if it's not veganism, if that's too extreme, then try vegetarian food. There's so many options, not just vegetarians or, or, or vegan outlets out there. There are actually more and more restaurants, mainstream restaurants that are opening up um, and giving more vegetarian, plant-based options for everyone. So it's actually really easy. Um, you just got to do it. Just give it a go. Well, Anne, thank you so much for taking the time out and for sharing all that wonderful insight with us. Thank you. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, scoot on over to our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. And I hope you learned something today so that you can live more consciously tomorrow.